Hey guys, welcome to Makulu Linux Lindos Edition 2020. So I'm going to show you all around the Lindos desktop, show you what's new, uh, what it's all about, and what's under the hood. So, Makulu Lindos Edition 2020 is an operating system that is catered towards both Linux users as well as people coming from the Windows environment. It is not a Windows clone, okay? We did not set out to make a Windows clone. This is merely themed similar to Windows, okay? So everything's Linux. Just the themes are similar to Windows. They're not exact, they're not clones, they're just similar to Windows. And it's themed that way so that somebody coming from Windows environment would feel more comfortable working in Linux. That's it. It's purely for comfort. We are not cloning Windows. I just want to make that clear, okay? So if we take a look at Lindos compared to last year's edition, you know, last year we uh, built on a Debian base. So how Makulu basically operates is we build a base each year. We take a base, we build it from scratch, we make a base. And then we usually put our desktop environments and, and, and our distros that we put out, we build on that base. So last year we built a strong Debian base and we built our Lindos, our core and our flash on that base. This year we've twisted it around, we switched it up a bit. We've now built a, an Ubuntu base. This is a, a Ubuntu base that pulls updates from the Bionic repo, okay? So this Lindos that you see here in front of you, this is built on that Ubuntu base. So just to clear that up. Okay, so if I open up here, you're going to see, if I go to like software sources, you're going to see there. It's pulling its updates from the Bionic repos, okay? As well, of course, getting core updates from Maklu Linux directly. The OS is running, well, out of the box, it runs with kernel 5.3 point blah, 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 blah. So kernel 5.3. Uko is installed so you can easily update the kernel or down, uh, downgrade the kernel to whichever one you prefer. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, let's go have a look at... Oh, uh, one other thing worth mentioning is uh, you will need a 64-bit CPU to run the OS. It is 64-bit. However, 32-bit architecture has been enabled, mostly because gaming is supported in this OS. And so 32-bit libraries and Wine and everything else... Uh, requires 32-bit uh, architecture, so we have enabled 32-bit. We have enabled 32-bit architecture, but you will need a 64-bit CPU to run the OS. Okay, so now that all of that is out of the way, let's have a look at the OS itself. Okay, so last year and this year, if we compare the two, uh, Lindos 2019 to Lindos 2020, you're going to see a couple of changes, but I guess not many off the bat. If you look at the desktop, it looks very similar. You still have the icons on the desktop. You still have the bottom panel with the favorites icons on the left, the menu button in the far left corner, system icons on the bottom right. But there are some noticeable changes. For example, the clock is different. Now, don't mind the strange language here. It's because I'm in Vietnam. It's obviously showing the Vietnamese language that's detected my location. But we, we previously, we used the clock from the... Uh, uh, wallpaper selector. It has a, a built-in clock and quote system. So we previously used that. We now use a Conky widget instead. I found it just a little bit better, easier, more flexible, and uh, I think prettier in many ways. Um, it's a better option. So it still gives the clock and the calendar like before, but you don't get the desktop quotes. Instead, now you get a little block with system information. You get a little block with uh, top running processes so you can see what's open. And of course, you get like a little news feeder. Whenever we update it on the web, it just sends a little, like a little news feeder, which is nice. So you can always see what's going on with the project. Um, anyway, so that's the Conky desktop widget that is now replace the uh, clock from last year. Okay, uh, apart from that, the only other major change that you will see straight off the bat is the menu. Last year we used a configurable menu which had a slightly different layout but it looked very similar to this. You also had a big 
grid system with a huge large icons as you see here but you had uh, 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 the applications and you had a systems section to the very far left this one's a very similar menu it's just a little bit of a different layout you still have the large icons over here but you have the categories on the left and the system at the bottom now and the search bar is on the bottom right okay so uh, a slightly different but still virtually the same it's also a probably a, a much simpler menu to to operate and it does look really nice you know you can right click it and you can go configure and you can also edit many of the settings so it is a really nice menu very comfortable to use you know got this little uh, pop-up display hint that gives you uh, like a description of what the app is you know so you manage drives and media calendar blah 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 okay anyway so it's a, a different menu that you'll notice straight out of the box the clock you'll notice straight out of the box um the the themes well we'll get to the themes in a bit i actually want to just show you some changes some things that have changed um number one we made a couple of things easier last year we had changed desktop background you could just right click on the desktop and choose change desktop background and you could scroll the ribbon with your mouse or drag the little slider that has not changed that's still the same you'll probably find there's a couple more wallpapers so that's nice really nice wallpapers for the new guys that don't know you can simply change the background just by right clicking on the desktop choose change desktop background this little ribbon pops up you can scroll with your wheel or pull the little indicator and you can simply just click on a uh, wallpaper that you see in the selection and, and it will just change instantly so it's very easy to do you just click and that's it done okay so um, just, I just want to look here for a very light wallpaper there we go something like that okay and then uh, if you right click any of these little uh, preview pics of the wallpaper it will actually tell you the name let you open a containing folder delete it straight from here to trash so you don't have to go into your backgrounds folder to delete it and of course the ribbon you can set the size of the ribbon the position so there's some nice nice little uh, options here and then of course just right click close when you're done so change that to background and when you've selected it right click close very easy to do you can also get the menu background from it's in the system settings if you open system settings you'll see there's backgrounds it is also here this little icon in the bottom panel okay now uh, so changing backgrounds is easy it's really nice it's easy and convenient and of course there's lots of backgrounds over there a nice selection that all beautiful um, so we cater to everybody's tastes and so forth um, something else to note now uh, if you look at the conky clock here if you look at this clock or uh, conky widget you'll see that the clock because we selected a light wallpaper and of course the clock is white that some of the text gets it's difficult to see some of the text now this was a problem with last year as well which is why we had to enable shadows on our clock last year to try and compensate for the fact that if you select a wallpaper that is a similar color to your clock the clock starts becoming invisible However, to come counter this, we've had to, you know, add a different color scheme. So what we came up with was a white and black clock. So white clock, which would be nice on dark wallpapers, and black clock, which would be nice on light wallpapers. You also get some wallpapers that are very neutral, and either clock doesn't matter displays on them. But in this one, we've got a white clouds there, so you've got this light wallpaper and this light clock, and they kind of clash. You know, you can't really make out a lot of the text. So to change the clock, it's really easy. Just right click on the desktop, choose desktop clock. It pops up. You can either select black or white. Currently white is there, so let's click select black. It takes like a second to change, and there you see, wow, nice, really nice. You can easily see the clock now and keep your beautiful background. Okay, so if we go, let's go change wallpaper again to something else. I like the original one, so let's go find it. There we go. Let's go find that. Now you see, this is one of those neutral backgrounds that you can run either the white or the black clock. But if we were on a dark wallpaper and this, this clock was difficult to see you could just simply choose desktop clock select white it takes like a second to change and you would be back on a clock so it's very easy now in Windows to change the background but then also to just adjust your clock so that you know if you have a specific nice wallpaper that you'd like to use you can simply just it just change the clock accordingly so that's nice I thought that was a nice touch 
Okay, so changing clock, changing wallpaper, you can do both in system settings. If you'll have a look at system settings, you'll see backgrounds and desktop clock there as well. Okay, some new something else as well is the themes. So usually by default, you know, um, with the cinnamon settings layout, the way they've designed the OS, you would go to themes advanced, or you'd go into open themes through your um, uh, system settings, or by clicking on the panel, and you would literally come set the window, set the windows border, set the icon, set the controls, set the mouse pointer, and then set the desktop uh, shell theme. It's a tedious, uh, long process, and very confusing for new users. So we thought we'd simplify that process a little bit. So now you can just right click on the desktop and just simply select themes and you'll see that the four most common, commonly golden aged themes from the Windows environment, which was classic XP, Windows 7 and Windows 10. Uh, if you go through the different eras of golden ages of Windows, these were pretty much the themes that stood out that most people use. So you can just simply right click on the desktop, choose themes, and you'll see here that you can select any of the four. And if you select one, for example, if you select classic, it will change the GTK, the borders, the icons, it will change the shell theme, it will change even the mouse pointer, like it changes everything. If I open up, you'll see even the mouse pointer will shows the old hourglass, the old style hourglass. So everything gets changed to classic instantly. I click, it's done. Same if I click XP, everything changes to XP, like a second later, there we go. GTK, blah, 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 icons. Uh, even, the, uh, even the hourglass pops up like it, the way it did in XP, you know, back in the days. You see the little hourglass with a little sand falling through. So it's, it's, it's really nice, you know, you've got the whole sort of similar to XP look. So anyway, uh, the same with Windows 10. You can just se click select on the Windows 10 theme and everything changes to look similar to Windows 10. Now remember, these themes are not clones. They are just similar, just enough to make you feel comfortable. So if you come from a Windows 10 environment, you instantly feel comfortable. Um, and of course, you can just go back to the default Windows 7 kind of theme that we have going as the default. Of course, you can choose to open up the Advanced Theme Manager and then still over here, you can now still go set all your borders manually. So for example, you can go set, let's say you're a fan of, I don't know, the old Whistler theme. I don't know if you're a fan of that, but maybe you are, you can set that there. You can set the Vista icons maybe. Let's go set here yeah, like the, which, let's go choose like uh, something like the Windows Server uh, controls. And then we choose uh, which one here. Let's go set the, I don't know. Let's go set the black Windows black, Windows 7 black uh, shell theme. Now you see here, we have now just created <laughs> quite a strange mixture of themes, but as you can see, you've got the default, uh, the, 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 the Windows 7 black theme going on here. It's a really nice with a curved bottom panel. Your GTK is sort of like the Windows 19, so Windows 2019 server edition, as you can see there. And your window borders are pretty much uh, like the Windows Whistler. So we've got a weird combination going on here, but that's nice, you know, whatever, whatever uh, people like. And of course, your icons are the Windows Vista icons. So it's a really crazy concoction there. And of course, if you want to go back to default, you can just right click and then just choose Windows 7 or something again. So really easy, just right click system themes. Very, very convenient. You can also find the, uh, it in the system settings under themes and themes advanced. So it's in there as well. Talking about system settings, um, We've also moved a shortcut for system settings into the right-click desktop context menu. So you can now just right-click and choose system settings. You no longer have to go through the menu and either from the launcher from the uh, favorites or from, I think it's administration. Is it administration? System settings. No, preferences, sorry. System settings. Uh, you no longer have to go and browse to get it just to open it. You can just right click on the desktop and choose system settings. Very, very easy and convenient. So there are a couple of shortcuts that really make quite a difference to the OS, you know, make things easy. I mean, themes is, you know, you've got to feel comfortable in your OS, so you want to change themes. So really easy, right click themes, change background, right click background, change clock, right click clock. Three very important things, of course, 
four very important things, system settings. So you can quickly get to all four at once, at any point in time, really quickly, just by right-clicking. I thought that was a nice touch to this update. Um, now, I want to also just point out that uh, extensions are no longer supported in Lindos. We have uh, desktop applets and we have desktop uh, desklets. So you've got the desklets and you've got the applets, but there are no extensions. We removed extensions from the OS. In fact, it's completely removed. You, you'll not find any access to it. The reason we removed it was, uh, you know, they're not very stable. Quite often, somebody would uh, enable extension that's out of date or something from the uh, Mint uh, extension repos or just manually copy one, install it, and then enable it, and then you you know wreak havoc on the system. So yeah, extensions are not a not a great way to keep an operating system stable. Um, so we've disabled extensions. So you will not find extensions working in Windows. I just so you know. Um, other than that, um, we have enabled a, a firewall, so you will get a firewall that's enabled by default. Uh, sorry, that's installed by default, but not enabled by default. So by default, you have a firewall, but it's not, in, it's not enabled. You can just enable it yourself. In fact, when you start up Windows for the first time, after you've installed it, not in live mode, this is live mode, if you actually install Windows, on first boot, you get a uh, like a little intro manager that takes you through a couple of steps, and on that intro manager, it asks you if you want to enable your firewall. So that's something nice uh, to look forward to as well. Uh, we have enabled uh, virus scanner, so virus scanner is on here, so you can just right click anywhere and choose scan for threats, any folder anywhere. Um, the reason for that again is that you know security is a priority. And uh, I know this is going to sound kind of like a cliche because uh, one of the other things we've done in this uh, build of Windows is we have disabled the sudo password, but only the lower the lower function sudo. GK sudo and uh, PQ exec still require a password. So any higher functions of sudo still requires a password, but the standard sudo commands no longer require a password. It is 2020. It is not 1962. We just feel that uh, you know it's tedious for every little thing you do. You've got to enter a password six thousand times a day. Um, you know, if you really want to secure your system, a much better way to do it is a firewall and a virus scanner. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, so you will not find uh, uh, lower commands needing sudo password. Uh, however, there is a firewall on the system and you are, do have a virus scanner. We also have Wine installed. Wine is pre-installed uh, on Windows and uh, pre-configured. You can run uh, games, you can run Steam, you can run Proton on your, uh, it's all there. You can run .exe files straight from the desktop, straight from a folder, just double click. MSI files, just double click. So you can run Windows apps on here with no issues. And of course, we've got the development build of Wine. So you're always updated with the latest build of Wine or near the latest build of Wine, which is really nice. Um, and of course, with Wine and Windows apps, there's the risk of viruses, which is why we added the virus scanner. Right, so let's just quickly take a look at the software, software selection, because we have preloaded Lindos with some software. So if we go look through the menu, we spent quite a lot of time, or at least I did, uh, researching software that most uh, Windows, uh, most Windows users and Linux users would use. You know, you've got to look at what comes in the default Windows system, and then also what comes with the default Linux system that most people like. And you know, doing some research about what what's daily used by a lot of people. I've had to compile a list. And also the testers gave feedback on what their preferences were. And so we kind of trimmed down a list at the end of the day. We made a list and then took away from that list. And we ended up with enough software to put on the system, but not bloat the system. So uh, pretty much that is what we, <laughs> this is where we ended up. So you've got a, some, um, you've got an Archive manager, you've got a calculator, of course, the virus scanner, you've got a disk manager, you've got a screenshot tool, you've got a leaf pad, which is like a notepad editor, a text editor, sorry. Uh, and this text editor is pretty similar to the Windows notepad, just, just to point that out. Uh, of course, a file manager, um, under graphics, you've got uh, my paint pinta, which is two um, uh, like paint editors, text uh, image editors. You've got a, a 
image viewer, no Max, very nice stylish image viewer. And the in internet, you've got your web browser, which is Google Chrome. You've got the RDP client. We added that because that's probably something that most Windows users would want. It is standard in any Windows edition, and uh, let's face it, most people do use uh, remote desktop apps nowadays, so it is a common app to have in, a, in any distro, Linux distro or in Windows, it should be there. Skype is on there, of course, as is Discord. Now, Discord is a messenger, like a social messenger, used by a lot of gamers, but also a lot of people just like uh, doing their projects and groups and so forth. We have a, a, a chat channel in Discord as well, so... You can always connect to us via Discord chat. Also included on in the internet section is a Google Drive client. This is a GUI client. Now, it is a simple client. It doesn't have all of the function that some of the paid clients do. For example, you can't sync only specific files and folders. It kind of just syncs everything. But uh, it does have a GUI. It is a GUI. It has some nice functions, and it does work. So you've got a, GUI, a Google Drive client straight out of the box working on the OS, that's nice, that's a nice touch. Uh, sound and video, you've got audio recorder, you've got Gazam, which is a screen recorder, and you've got MPV uh, media player. Now, I know a lot of people are going to oh, why didn't you install VLC? Yeah, I don't know. Um, VLC is in the software center. If you want it, click it, install it. It's a couple of megs. It'll take you like a minute, to, two minutes to install. So it's no big deal. If VLC, if you want VLC, it's easy to install. Um, we put MPV player on because it has a lot of functionality, especially with, uh, 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 um, I don't know, custom scripts and stuff. We found that very handy. It's also a trending player. Believe it or not, a lot more people seem to be using MPV player now than used to. You know, so it is an upcoming player and we always like to just change things up a little bit, just make something interesting, do something interesting. So we thought MPV player, uh, it also uses less space too, just by the way. But if you do prefer VLC Media Player, you can just get it from a software set. There's no big deal. It is in there. Uh, under administration, you've got a lot of the same type of software that you'll probably find uh, everywhere else. Uh, it is noteworthy to point out that we do have Time Shift Install, which is a system restore utility. It gives you basically a snapshot feature similar to the Windows system restore. So you can go set up your snapshot, which the intro manager take, walks you through anyway. And... Um, Yes, just so you can restore your system at any point. There's a USB creator on there as well. Of course, I pointed out Uku is on there too, as well as there's a nice driver manager and some other useful tools on there. App Grid and, uh, App Grid and Synaptic Package Manager is also installed. Okay, uh, <clears throat> if we go down to games, you'll see there's Solitaire's on there, Chess is on there, and Sudoku's on there. So three little traditional games on there. Of course, Steam is pre-installed, so you can run Steam out of the box. Proton works great, so you can play lots of games, lots of Windows games do, no issues. We have one of our testers that plays uh, 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 Proton games on, on Makulu. He loves it. Uh, Play on Linux is installed, which is a front-end GUI for Wine, mostly used by gamers to install Windows games, so that's on there too. If you actually look in the Favorites apps, which is the default tab when you open the menu, you'll see there that Q for Wine is also installed, which is another front-end for Wine. So you've got two front-ends for Wine. Some people might prefer the one, some people might prefer the other one. There are advantages and disadvantages to using both. I think Play on Linux is much more automated, probably for new users, where Q for Wine is much more manual. You've got a lot more power over the settings of your wine, uh, little wine database that you create. If you go down to Office, you've got a full Office suite here, full LibreOffice suite is installed. Okay, you've got an Evolution mail client, you've got a multi-document viewer over there, and of course you've got a nice little calendar. If I open the calendar, let's take a look here, see it's a nice calendar. So, pretty much a really nice rounded uh, software selection for users. It's not too much. It's just a little bit of everything that most people use every day. A media, pl a audio player, a video player, a text editor, it's office suite, a mail, a mail client, a calendar calculator. It's, it's all standard stuff. It's If you use Linux, you most likely will install. I mean, 90, 99% of people will probably install these exact same apps. So we've just provided them out of the box. You don't have to waste your time installing them. We also cater to disadvantaged people, people that might have problems with the eyesight or hearing, uh, 
Um, yeah, so if you have a look here under a universal access, you'll see we've got a screen reader, pre-installed, working out of the box, uh, on-screen keyboard, and a magnifier, screen magnifier tool as well. So, really, really, really nice software selection that caters to almost everybody out of the box. If we have a look here at the favorites at the bottom, you'll see, the, of course, the file manager, the web browser, the terminal, and then I'll, this is the one I want to get to, a software center. So if you open up this GNOME software, very easy to use. Most Linux distros use it anyway. You've got categories there. You've got editors, picks here. If you like something, just click on it. Just my internet's a little choppy. Uh, so yeah, it will load screenshots, give a rating system, over here it will tell you where, where, uh, where, which repo it's in. We do support Snap Store, which as you can see is enabled by default. We also have Flatback enabled. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, you can read the reviews and of course if you want to install, just click the install button. Very easy, very simple. You know I'm inside a virtual machine by the way. You, you might think I'm, I'm on real hardware. No, I'm on a virtual machine. So you can imagine how fast this is on real hardware if it's running so smoothly in a virtual machine. Look, I'm inside a virtual machine. Wow, so fast and so smooth. Everything is just nice. It's a nice OS. It has a nice feel, a really nice look. You know, Lin, uh, Linux people will enjoy it because it's a little something a little different while at the same time still Linux. Um, Windows users will like it because it makes them feel a little comfortable being in this strange environment, in Linux environment, but still having a little bit of the Windows feel. You know, they leave Windows, they don't want to go back to Windows, so they don't want a Windows clone. I think this is what a lot of the people that build Linux distros to clone Windows, they don't seem to understand, is that when Windows people leave Windows, they don't want to go back to Windows. So they don't want a Windows clone. They want to try something new, but they also don't want to get into a place where they feel completely out of place. You know, and this is, I think, the magic of Lindos, where it kind of feels familiar, but it's not at the same time. Okay, so basically, it's a really nice OS. I don't want to really go into too, too in-depth review. I just want to show some of the differences, have people feel comfortable, see how nice and stable it runs. You know, we spent, uh, at least more than a year now making this. It's crazy how long how long a time we really spent on, on rewriting a lot of the back end. But you can see the, 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 the results, how nice and easy it is. And some of the, just even the simple things that we've added that just make make such a big difference. So pretty much that's what I'm going to show you today, guys. If there's a, there's a lot more under the hood, but I'm going to leave that for you guys to discover. Um, this is pretty much Lindos 2020, a very smooth, very nice eye candy popping uh, distro. It looks beautiful out the box. It just feels comfortable. It runs well. It's a smooth experience. Everything just gels well. You got all these quick, quick instant access uh, uh, features right at your fingertips. It's a really smooth and easy process to, uh, 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 OS to use. It runs like a dream. It's stable. You can game on it. You can off do office work on it, video edit on it. It, it supports everything. It, it's really, really easy to use. It's comfortable, put it that way. If I had to put this OS in one word, I would say it's comfortable. Easy to use and comfortable. That's probably the phrase I would use. Easy to use and comfortable. Right, and not just for Windows users, for Linux users as well, but on both sides of the border. It's easy and comfortable. Okay, so one last thing I want to mention is that, um, you know, uh, we're sorry for the delay. There's been quite a delay with getting this out. I know guys have been waiting for a long time, and we promised that it would be out, you know, end of last year, January it would be out, and we basically been delayed two months, and the reason for that is the uh, coronavirus. You know, I'm based in Vietnam. So I'm right here, smack dead in the middle of, of this chaos that's you know pursued us for the last two months because of the coronavirus. Now, I'm not in China, so I'm not in any kind of danger uh, or direct danger, but I am in Vietnam, which is the, you know, the neighboring country, and there's been uh, 16 people infected in Vietnam. 
There's uh, 10,000 people in Vietnam that's currently on lockdown, meaning they can't even leave their houses, they're on lockdown. There's a further 5,000 uh, Chinese that are currently in quarantine. And then there's a further 87,000 people in Vietnam that are being monitored. They're not in quarantine and they're not on lockdown, but it is suspected that they've had some contact with people that may, be, may have been infected. So they are currently being monitored. In China, it's much worse. They have what, 60 today, 69,000 people infected, 1,700 dead. It's crazy that the virus is really out of control. And I feel really sorry for everybody that's going through some kind of drama because of it. The people that are dying, the families of those people, the, 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 the people that are infected, the doctors that are not getting any rest. They, they're working shifts after shifts, 36, 72 hours on their feet with no rest. Um, it's, it's a terrible thing that's, that's hit Asia right now. And it's affected the project badly as well because it's, you know, everything's shut down here. The internet is terrible. It's just, it's chaotic. You can't go outside. You have to watch where you go and what you do. Uh, half the companies are shut down. The schools are shut down. The varsities are shut down. The borders are shut down to half of Asia. It's, it's a crazy time. And, uh, you know, I haven't even had a salary for basically two months. But I'm not too worried about that. You know, I, I'm a survivor and I'm okay still with money. Uh, uh, the point is, that the point that I want to make is that the reason for the delay was a good reason. We, you know, with this whole coronavirus, it's just been a little crazy. So um, we didn't stop working though. And, you know, we're bringing out 10 releases this year. Makulu has scheduled 10 releases in 2020. I don't even know another Linux distro that's going to even attempt even half of that. We're bringing out 10 releases, and we've been working on that for a while. So they, they're they all in development, and they're all at very good development stages already. So it, it's confirmed we are releasing 10 releases this year. This is only the first. So uh, a lot of work. We've done a lot of work. We're doing a lot of work. But at the same time, I must point out that our project is financially not doing great because we've had no donations. Well, very little anyway. Um, I don't know why people don't seem to like donating to Makulu. I don't know if we've done something wrong. Like you always see these guys like Ubuntu and Mint and everybody else that I look at. They have got these great finances and lots of people always throwing money at them. But, you know, nobody seems to like us. <laughs> I don't know why. Have we offended somebody? I don't know. But I would like to point out that the, due to the fact that, you know, the last two months have been a little crazy, our project is taking a, quite a knock financially. You know, we just like other Linux distros, we've got repos to pay, VPS servers to pay, websites to pay. You know, everything costs money. We don't live in a world where things don't cost money. Everything costs money. So, if you want to donate to the project, please do. If you like our work, throw us a couple of bucks. Jeez. You know, even a couple of bucks goes a long way, and, and every cent helps. So to donate to the project is really easy. There's a donate button on the desktop. There's also in the menu. There's a donate in the menu. You can go onto our website. There's a donate button there as well. You can donate via PayPal, or you can just subs you know subscribe on Patreon to become a Patreon. Um, throw us a couple of bucks. Jeez. You know, we'll continue the hard work. We'll keep putting out good distros. And, you know, like I said, we've got 10 releases scheduled this year. So, yeah, uh, we'll do our part. You know, you maybe throw us a couple of bucks and, and keep us going. So, Makulu Linux, Lindos Edition 2020. It's coming to you very soon. In fact, this is the release video, so when you see this, it will probably be out already. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a lovely time running it. It's been an amazing uh, experience making this. I'm really, really, really chuffed with it. I'm very, very happy with the progress and how it turned out. And uh, I look forward to making the next release video on the next distro we put out. So I will chat to you guys soon. Cheers.